Welcome back to Thoughtful Thursday. We are excited to be with you again. We are recapping our last series that we did, Travel Light, and we kind of just wanted to have some conversations around it because we haven't done one of these within the series. So we have basically four weeks to kind of talk about uh, user's choice. If something pops up, just, you know, we kind of have some questions here we go off of. I'll, I'll start with some questions, but we usually, it's usually how we operate. We kind of just go wherever wherever we decide to go with stuff. So um, I'll jump right into it. Uh, and when I say jump right into it, we've actually been talking for like 20 minutes already. So we're pretending to jump right into it. Uh, I want to read this verse. In By the Philippians. way, we've been talking for 20 minutes about nothing. Absolutely. Not nothing. anything to do with this. Well, I mean, like you forgot deodorant today. I did. And you borrowed mine. I did. Because that's what friends are for. I appreciate it very much. Um, so I want to read this verse in Philippians chapter 2, which was the first week of the series. And so kind of just to recap the flow of the series, we talked about the general idea of spiritual maturity, what that actually was. And then we went to mapping out our journey. We went to what kind of baggage do we need to take with us on this journey? And then we, this last week we talked about the destination. So, um, so just in a general sense, sense, spiritual maturity, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 13 says, Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So kind of two questions based on that. One is, as you hear those verses, what jumps out in those? Um and then, you know, I have down here this idea of working out your salvation. This is kind of a, a hot topic, so to speak, in church world. So I'm open to discuss either of those. That or what what jumps out to you on those? I think uh, one of the first things that I think about as I smack myself in the <laughs> face with the microphone. <laughs> wow, that was long. That was. Yeah. That was. I feel like there is a constant battle between is it works for your salvation or is it faith for your salvation, right? I feel like there's these two camps that are yeah. kind of at odds with each other that, you know, it's by faith you've been saved, but then, you know, you know, even in here, work hard to show the results of your salvation. I, I think that there is a, a both and part of faith, salvation, and works, it's like it's not the good things that we do that earn our salvation for mm-hmm. us, but you know, if we have an authentic relationship with Jesus, that it's going to be seen, and it's what we're talking about right now in the warehouse with our first through fifth graders and with our zero through six year olds is the fruit of the spirit, and you know these are going to be evidence of your salvation. Yeah, yeah, fruit of the spirit is what came to my mind as well. Because, yeah, it, it, you said the word proof, and that's what I feel like it is. Like, there's going to be evidence of a changed life. Um, and if you, you know, if there's no evidence there, like, maybe, maybe there's some issues. Yeah, and not to like oversimplify it, because um, this probably is oversimplifying it. But just thinking in terms of, you know, normal relationships, like um, because of my love for my wife like i pursue her you said that so passionately (laughs) because of the love for my wife that's how i talk (laughs) she's listening (laughs) i love you she doesn't listen so um actually she started to right whenever you talked about her talked bad about her yeah Um, don't put this on me okay so anyways if you're done making fun of the cadence of my voice (laughs) no i'm um, not yet but go ahead we'll do it later because my wife loves me and I love her out of, out of that mutual love for each other. Like I want to serve. I want to show her my love for her. I want to pursue her. Um, same thing in our response, uh, with Jesus, you know, we love because he first loved us. It's a, it's a response and that requires action. So I think one of the biggest takeaways for me during this um, series was that God is the one that initiates it all. Um, because when I read that first part, work, what is it? Work out? No. 
where is it? Show the results. Work hard. Yeah. Work hard. Like I stop right there. Yeah, we love that part. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go on, it says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And so I just, yeah, stop after work hard. And so I just continue to try to do it all in my own power. And then you get frustrated and you're like, well, I'm never going to be good enough because you just, you're never, an, you never reach that. Yeah. What you think is you know, the bar. Yeah. Um, as a fellow achiever, I definitely need the reminder of the second mm-hmm. part of that verse, verse 13. The other thing, and I don't have an answer for this. I, I think it's something even just now reading it, I want to maybe do a little bit of a word study on is that idea of deep reverence and fear. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I think I have somewhat of a grasp on the idea of fear and what that means, but I don't know if I've ever really looked into that deep reverence. Mm-hmm. That'd be interesting to kind of explore what that actually means. Yeah. Any other thoughts on those verses or the idea of spiritual maturity? Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to make sure I'm not jumping ahead here with anything. I love this series, um, especially big picture, like the idea of this journey, um, there's a beginning, a destination of where we're headed. Um, I personally would never go anywhere without pre-planning a trip, even if that means just GPS of, okay, hey, I, I know. It's wild how people I'm do going. that, though. Like, people, oh, just go. They just go, or they're like, we met somebody at the airport, and we were like, how you getting there? They're like, oh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm like, like you didn't rent a car yet? You didn't get an Uber? Oh, I don't know. We'll just figure it out. I'm like, that's so weird to me. Anyways, yeah, I, I went and rode motorcycles uh, the other day, and I was just fine. You rode multiple motorcycles? I rode one, and there was someone else that rode another one. <laughs> okay, that's good. And um, Advanced trick riding already. And, and I was just following them, no idea where I was. Like, literally, I mean, I know I'm driving in straight lines down country roads, so I should be able to figure it out pretty yeah. easy. Yeah, it's not too tough. Um, but I'm just not, that's not really how I'm wired. And so I was just like... I was enjoying it, but also yeah. like, yeah, if something happens to him, I have no idea what I'm going to do because I would have no idea. I when you're not the he... one navigating, I don't pay attention. Sure. Like, and I know that's not the conversation we're having, but yeah, well, like I just don't pay attention. I'm like, I have no clue how we got here because I wasn't driving. And I think that, that that's actually a great connection though. Well, thank you. Because I think that <laughs> it's totally intentional. There's been times in my life where I've kind of treated my faith like that. And I think if we're going to be honest with ourselves, or our listeners are going to be honest that there's probably times where maybe that's been true for them where, yeah, pastors got this or, you know, my my parent has it or my spouse has it. And I'm just kind of along for the ride. I'll show up on Sundays, Mm. you know, get my instructions for the week and then, you know, maybe get lost from this week to the next. And I think that this um, series for me has been a good reminder, even though, and I was talking with Kimmy about this last two weeks, I have not gone back and rewatched and I haven't been able to be there. So I'm kind of <laughs> off with that just mm-hmm. for what it's worth. Um, but I feel like we, it's very easy to get in that space of just, yeah, being the more like a passenger staring out the window, just staring out the window, vibing out. So I'm going to throw a little Jesus was supposed to take the wheel. Well, that's what I was thinking it when you said it, I was thinking from a different viewpoint of like when I was a kid going on a road trip with my family, like it was the best week of my life. And I would read books the entire time. We'd play games. We'd, we didn't have to be buckled in. So we would just have (laughs) back in the good old days. (laughs) We lay down in the trunk Uh, because I totally trusted my dad. Like, I knew he had it. I didn't sit there worrying, oh, is he going to take a wrong turn? Are we lost? Even if we were, you know, maybe off the beaten path or whatever, like, I knew he had it, and the destination was always so great. Yeah. So. That's a really sweet perspective. Yeah. I'm too much of a control freak. It's true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> <laughs> I will say there kind of is one thing I didn't like about this series. and The preacher. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess one of those. That was good. <laughs> Keeps going. Um, I feel like there's more to spiritual growth in our journey than what we were able to talk about. A hundred percent. Yeah. So, and I mean, 
you could do a year long series probably and yeah. still mm-hmm. have, which I, I don't say that in like an overwhelming sense of like, ugh, I mean, it will never be able to grow if there's 52 weeks worth of stuff I need to learn, but to try to like tidy it up in a little four week package is probably a little bit short sighted or to assume that that could happen is a little bit short sighted. So I, I would just say like, if you were here for the series or you've been watching online, just know like that's probably not everything there is. Just curious. Do you have a favorite book on like spiritual disciplines or anything like that? Me or anybody? Um, I've been reading a lot of Watchman Nee lately, who was a leader in the uh, Chinese church and his books are fairly small, but on specific disciplines and they're very good. They're from like the seventies, eighties, but they're very good. So I've been kind of working through some of those. Spirit of the Disciplines, um, Dallas Willard's really good, too. Yeah, that was, I couldn't remember it, but that was one that I've really liked. And then one of my favorite ones, um, I thought just an incredible book on kind of spiritual maturity, and um, it's called Conformed as Image by Kenneth Boa. Love it. It's incredible. By who? Kenneth Boa, B-O-A. Okay. It's like a, it's more like a textbook. Oh, wow, that sounds riveting. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, Maybe take that part out of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it reads like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Dude, I'm all about that. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> High fantasy. fantasy. Week two, we walk through the passage in Psalm 42, and I'm not going to read the whole passage, but essentially it's a psalm. We don't really know who wrote it. I have my assumptions. I do think it's probably David, but either way, you see a lot of, you know, uh, I'm like a tree you know, or like a deer comes to the water. That's how I want to be. And there's this like longing and intimacy with God. And then it's like the only thing that I'm eating right now are my own tears. And I'm so sad, but God is good and this and that. And then also this, I'm sad. And like, so you see that back and forth. I really love that because I do think that's just the human experience. Um, if, I could be wrong on this, and this might just be my own spiritual immaturity, but there are times when like, when people are always like, oh, no, everything's always good, and I'm just always on a spiritual high. I just want to be like, yeah, I don't believe you. Like, I just, I, I feel like you struggle to see that in the pages of Scripture. You don't, you don't see really any examples of that. Um, and I think it does a disservice to, to people we're either discipling or people who are watching our lives to just pretend like Mm -hmm. you're just happy all the time and everything's great. Um, So in your life, have you ever felt overwhelmed or burdened on your spiritual journey? Um, In that season, did you experience God drawing you to him? And just kind of how did you walk that line with whatever situation you were in between the situation of life and trusting God? And I know that's like three questions in one, but. I'm so confused right now. Also, to be fair, uh, we literally shared these questions like a few hours ago. So <laughs> Yeah. So I'll start off. I was just trying to give other people the opportunity to well, I appreciate that, share. Um, yes, absolutely. I felt overwhelmed, burden, challenged many points on my my own spiritual journey. And some of those we've talked about, I think, in past podcast episodes. Some of them I've talked about from the stage in the past. Um I think that I tend to, I tend to get overwhelmed um, in seasons of life where things are challenging or, or really hard things are happening, um, and I do not think that my first reaction very often is trusting God. Um, I think it's what can I do to make the situation better or change my situation. It's very me oriented. Um, do you feel like when that is your initial reaction, do you feel like that just compounds the problem? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Absolutely. Um, 
because nine times out of 10, there's not much I can do to make my situation better or, yeah. um, and so I, I th- I'm thinking about different times throughout my life, um, where I've specifically been overwhelmed or burdened. And especially with that, you know, did you experience God drawing myself to him? I think that's an interesting question. And, um, I'm not sure how I feel about that question. I think that there's been times where I have felt God very, feel very present in my life. Um, I feel like there's been times where I have felt his presence through other people, brothers and sisters in Christ that have come alongside me and helped me and encouraged me. And then there's, there's even been times where I kind of felt like God has been totally silent and, um, some of that might be that I was creating so much noise that it was kind of difficult to hear him. Um, but there has been times where I feel like I was maybe even allowed to experience a struggle. Um, and then how did I kind of wrestle with the situation versus trusting in God? I think it's been a pretty similar pattern for me in my wrestling and it's, it's funny. And I think we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but I think one of the things that has helped me most and been a really big pattern for me in my life in moments of struggle has been memorizing scripture and keeping God, the truth about God and God's truth close to my heart and, and present in my mind. Um, and also I think every single time the people around me have made the biggest impact of reminding me of God being good or just someone to be there to share a burden or a challenge. Um, even if they're not doing anything, the fact that they're present, present. Yeah. That ministry of presence. And I think we've, we've even talked about that in the past, (laughs) uh, ministry of presence. I was thinking about this question, maybe from a different perspective. And Nick, you even said something that kind of um, got my wheels turning on this. But I feel like for me, in the big things of life, the like real um, struggles and obstacles, that's when like faith ignites and rises up more quickly. Okay. And so it's in like the day to day. Yeah. That is probably more of a struggle. Um, at least that's been my experience for me. Um, but, but thinking through the idea that like, you know, Nick, sometimes you've even acknowledged that God probably was silent for a a time or a season, um, for a purpose. And, and I wonder if like just the reality that God doesn't, we can't control him. Um, he's not someone we can manipulate. Uh, he doesn't show up the same every time I look at like with Moses and the Egyptians and the way he, uh, they encountered him the way he, um, led them, showed himself to them. Like it was different every time. Right. And I just think through some of those realities of like, I think that's part of spiritual maturity that God maybe in his graciousness when we're newer in the faith and baby Christians um, maybe seems more prevalent, more present, but then God takes us through seasons where he's trying to draw us into deeper waters and that requires us to go deeper in our faith and our disciplines, um, it may not come as easy as it once did. Um, and so, yeah, just thinking about like intentional seasons where God might be, he might feel more distant, even though he's not because he's trying to get our roots to grow deeper. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with everything you already said. It's, um, the bigger struggles where 
I feel like faith really does rise up and grow and you feel, and I'm speaking personally for myself, just many different experiences, you know, I think one, and forgive me if I've already talked about this, um, my husband was in a head on, you know, collision years ago and, you know, so he didn't work for a year. I had just quit my job to stay home with our two boys at the time. Um, but even during that first, those first few nights that he was in the hospital, going through major surgeries and whatnot, like I would come home and um, listen to messages that people had left on. At that time, we had an answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Did they have um, an actual tape in it? <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> um, no, it didn't. But I just remember specifically reading through um, many familiar Psalms. Um, and uh, anytime something like that happens as well, um, the worship songs that come to mind are the ones I grew up on. So little plug in there for kids mm -hmm. ministry and parents, like what you're doing is so valuable and important. Even if you think it's not sticking, um, those are the things that come to mind. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of goes back to that scripture memorization. The reason those songs or those Psalms showed up in that moment is because I didn't have them committed to memory word for word, but they were part of my childhood and my life. And so when I needed them, that's what the Holy Spirit brought to mind. But um, for me, the hardest part of my spiritual journey is um, just being consistent in all the spiritual disciplines when life is just normal. Um, it's really the status hard. Status quo. It is just really hard to do the things I don't want to say do the things because it talks, going back to that first conversation about working hard, but um, it's just hard for me to get into scripture and spend time praying and doing all the spiritual disciplines that I know are so valuable when life is just good. Do you feel like, and I'm, I'm not necessarily trying to let you off the hook. Um, don't do it. There is no hook to be <laughs> let off, but. It, I'm not it, a fish. Is there a part of you <laughs> that feels like, that's okay. Like in certain seasons, there's more emphasis on a spiritual discipline than maybe the others. And not that the others go by the wayside, but you know, I, I feel like I've had seasons in my life where I really needed silence and solitude, mm -hmm. or I really needed to, to dive deeper into prayer or what, whatever it is. I don't, I don't know. Like I'm only saying this as a fellow achiever of when is enough enough, mm -hmm. you know, like, how much are you ever going to get to a point where you're like, oh, I'm reading my Bible enough. I'm praying enough. I, I spend enough time in quiet. Yeah. So I think when I'm feeling that way, um, just to circle back, like I'm not recognizing that God is the one that's drawing me into this relationship. Like I loved and was in one of the study guides. It talked about, you know, anytime you read a letter that Paul wrote, how does he set it up? Mm -hmm. The first part of the letter is his overwhelming love for the church that he's writing to and how he wishes he were with them and um, till he visits the next time and like realizing he's uh, showing us an example of how God longs for us as well. And so just to remember that and sit in that yeah. place instead of, oh, I got to read my Bible this morning and check it off the list. I wish one of those letters would have started with, y'all are getting on my everlasting nerve. <laughs> hey, morons. I, I have reached my limit. <laughs> this is my last letter. <laughs> I will not write to you again. Please stop doing the dumb things good day, you're doing. Sir. I said good day. Sincerely, <laughs> Private Paul. Uh, um, yeah. I think... It's probably a dumb question to even ask. Have you ever felt overwhelmed or burdened? Because yeah. it's like, <laughs> no. Um, Never. So let's just assume we all have. Um, for me, I feel like the times I experience God drawing are on two ends of a spectrum. It's either I need to be in silence and solitude. Like you said, I, I tend to, to feel it, to hear it, to experience it when the chaos isn't happening and have I, I've intentionally eliminated that or it really feels like it comes out of left field and I'm just going about my day and all of a sudden it's just like a two by four to the head. You know, you're like, Whoa, I was not expecting that. Um, and I, I, that might just be unique to me and I know everyone's different, but it feels like those drawing experiences are on both ends of those spectrums. And 
I think Andy Stanley is the one who said um, there are certain things that aren't problems to solve, but tensions to manage. And I think this this line or this tension of wrestling with a situation in my life and trusting God, I don't think it's anything we're ever going to just go like, oh, I've nailed it. I just think it's probably one of those tensions we'll manage because the situations change. And in 10 years from now, I'm going to be facing issues that, you know, 39 year old version of myself never even thought about or didn't mm-hmm. knew existed. And so I'm not going to have really any well to draw, draw off of other than who God is, but I'm mm-hmm. going to have to wrestle with that. And then five years after that, there'll be new things. And yeah. then, you know, I'll be almost as old as Daniel at that point. And <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Wow. Um, I'll be so mature by then. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. So go. let's go to week three then, the scripture memorization. I, I know that was a big part of that, and I hesitated even necessarily making that such a big emphasis because there is so much more to that moment. You know, the moment we talked about was Jesus in the wilderness being tempted um, by Satan. And there's so much more to it than just the recalling of scripture. But I do think that's the one piece of that interaction that – if we're all honest, none of us are probably really good at it. Uh, any anybody like you're just like I'm hitting home runs here with scripture memorization. No. If we're being honest, then the answer is no. Okay. What if you were being dishonest? I'm doing great. I'm the best. <laughs> I'm like the LeBron James of scripture memorization. <laughs> so that's I, that's really why we focused on that. I mean, we had done a series on prayer and fasting, and that was a big part of the conversation. With the, was this interaction, and so obviously that's a part of overcoming temptation so knowing none of us do this or have really mm-hmm. done this has there been any changes in the last couple of weeks zero okay appreciate you still being honest i've not done great at this over the years although it is something that i think four or five years ago i started taking more seriously and doing so it's not something that i like always have scripture that i'm memorizing but it is something that i will reflect on a scripture for a set amount of time. But um, one thing that I've been doing recently, um, I brought home my dad's Bible um, from his house and um, it's a real, he's had it for, I mean, since probably before I was born. So there's a lot of notes and a lot of um, highlighting and it's a good old KJV because we were raised in the Baptist church and, um, so it's not something I'm going to be bringing to church and using, but it has been interesting to just kind of read through it and look at the things that he made notes of and reflected on or things that he had, um, he had a, a color for scripture memorization. So to see the things that he at least was trying to memorize has been yeah. kind of interesting. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. I know we talked about this before, but like, um, my process has definitely been, I don't know, probably one of my best spiritual disciplines is like meditation or reflection, just taking time to stop, reflect, think, ponder. So um, doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me and Cam here are just like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like. Like Nick, um, I would say God has me in passages of scripture, I feel like, for lengths of time. And um, so I spent a lot of time in one area just um, reflecting, learning, applying. Like, and generally it's because God's doing something in my heart for a particular, you know, mm-hmm. season or time. Um, and those are the things that I tend to be able to reach back and draw you know, like David did whenever he's, or whoever the psalmist of Psalm 42 is, you know, to to be able to anguish about his present circumstances, but cling back to who he knows God is and what God's revealed and done in his life, right? His testimony. So that's kind of, um, I'm good at that with scripture. What I have never been as intentional about trying to um, really memorize that. So ponder, you know, treasure these things in my heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, um, 
really having a discipline of learning, being able to recite. Um, yeah, I've, I've just never, never been good at it. And There's, your, your message inspired me good. to think a lot about it. Good. You know, it's been a week though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You've been meditating on what you should do. I was actually thinking about starting James <laughs> since you're in James because I yeah. thought it'd be something cool that we could compete on. See if you not can compete. We would never compete over it. It wouldn't be do a together like because I would decimate you with the <laughs> the sweat of my work. <laughs> see. It's kind of more of a couples activity. <laughs> you guys are gonna do. I I do I do want to say uh, we've made fun of we make fun of you for certain things. There are things that. Or easy to make fun of. I haven't noticed. One thing we make fun of. I was thinking about this the other day. I forgot to tell you. (laughs) Are you going to make me cry? I don't know. (laughs) I mean, it's really not that hard. I was getting some cottonwood. (laughs) Uh, Rub it on your face. So we make fun of you because you will kind of go back to things often. Uh You like say these things. Amago day. That's exactly what I was going to say. We didn't have to say it. He Mm -hmm. knows. So we make fun of you for that. But I will say, when I was reading a psalm the other day, I was like, David is so repetitive. <laughs> like, these were just things that meant a lot to him. Yeah. And so that's okay. Daniel, David, pretty close. Yeah. Very. Warriors. Dance naked man. in the streets. <laughs> Dance naked in the streets. <laughs> that hasn't happened. Hopefully not stealing people's wives. <laughs> <laughs> or having um, their husbands murdered. <laughs> So I did, I did see a really funny TikTok video the other day of David when he gets to heaven. He's like, yeah. That's like Bathsheba's husband comes up. <laughs> he's like. <laughs> terrible. I don't know why. I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> oh, anyways. Oh, we're horrible. I, that is something that I, I actually do really appreciate about you because I sometimes I feel like, I'm broken because I cannot remember things because I have such because we all are uh, not that type of broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a different broken, <laughs> like a broken broken um, because I can't remember things. Like I'll you know you'll bring up something that was said by somebody you know a year ago and I'll be like that's I called mean, now that you say that I can <laughs> I can remember that but like yeah if you hadn't right. brought that up. I would have never remembered that again. And that's something that I do appreciate. Cammie, what Cammie? about you? Oh, you goodness. have any ways you'd like to encourage me? <laughs> to? None. <laughs> um, I think just hearing all of you talk, um, like, I don't know if I want to share this, but I will. It, it, I, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> So which button should I get ready to hit? Is this gonna be funny, <laughs> sad, creepy? I don't know. That's why I'm not sure if I want to share. Magical. But probably th- three years ago, I was at uh, something and the speaker was talking. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I just so I think we were even supposed to be praying, and so it was just a time of silence or whatever. And I just had this picture in my head, so it wasn't like a vision from the Lord or whatever, but that I was just um, you know picturing myself standing before the throne um, and. This is what I, <laughs> I did not have any clothes on and I would not make that image up in my head. No woman would. And if I did, like I would have, you know, just the best shaped body ever. <laughs> and it was as, no, as the, the most nondescript, um, body that anybody could have. And the reason why I know I didn't just come up with this on my own, I felt no shame. I felt no shame standing before God um, that way. And when I looked, I just saw myself just covered in God's word. Like words, his word was just, that's what I was cloaked in. Mm. And as I was just walking, um, his words would fall off on the people as I walked past. And I was just thinking, oh, that's, that's what. I want to happen someday that when I open my mouth and I'm not, I hope this doesn't sound um, like that, like I'm trying to achieve this or prideful or whatever. I'm, that is so not happening <laughs> right now. Um, but just that I know so much of God's word, not even memorizing word for word so that I can change, um, you know, my heart can be changed or whatever. But as I walk and talk. The only thing that people are getting is his words. Like it's just falling on him, on them. So 
In this dream you had, were the rest of us worshiping you at the end? <laughs> no, and it wasn't was even a, a dream. Coat of many colors. I was fully awake. I, it was, and it wasn't Corona. like again. That's I, I probably shouldn't have shared that. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a picture. It was just a picture in my head. You know how you daydream? It was just yeah, a daydream. I usually, never mind. <laughs> that's, I usually don't daydream I think about that. myself. <laughs> exactly. That's my point is why I knew yeah. that this was not something that, oh, I'm just going to think of myself as this person. That yeah. That's my point. It was not anything that I would have ever pictured. No, I, in I actually think that's a pretty powerful, uh, a pretty powerful um, picture. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> it's lost words. I'm sharing that because uh, I I want that for everyone. That's what I want for everyone. But and you know. I think that that has been probably one of the most beautiful things that's come out of my own personal memorization of scripture when I'm really serious about it and memorize it. Like Psalm 28 is a great example. It's one you know that I still not word for word per, absolutely perfect, but. Like I can still recite back to myself and speak into other people is when I memorize something and usually it's for me mm-hmm. in my relationship with God, I find myself in situations where I'm able to use that. And other people the need Holy it. Spirit impressing that upon me to use that scripture or encourage them with that. And, yeah. Um, you yes, know, thank so you I, for bringing that home. That was my whole point. Is what is my motive of memorizing you, scripture? I got you. I got you. Listen, <laughs> Never really we, got that part out because I just really didn't want to share this. You, but <laughs> we appreciate you sharing that, and we will forever from this point forward make fun of you. <laughs> no, that's why I didn't want to share it. It was actually something very, it's very beautiful, special, meaningful. Yeah. No, it is. It's thank cool you for sharing that with us, <laughs> or at least me. <laughs> Screw these guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I already said, I, I've done a pretty terrible job of this since fifth grade because that was when I left Olympians. And <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't know what that is, just Google it. Not the Olymp- talent not elsewhere. the actual Olympics, just the knockoff Christian version of it. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've, I've just set a goal to memorize the book of James. I think it's a book full of wisdom. I have always loved James because it's from Jesus' brother's perspective, which I just think is a very unique um you know, perspective and just reading the things he writes, like living this life with him, not believing in him. It's just a, it's a super cool book. Mm -hmm. And I literally don't have a super spiritual reason why James It's just always been a go-to book for me. A lot of times when I'm counseling someone after like meeting with them the first time, I'll be like the whole piece of homework I give is, We'll set your next appointment to talk after you read the whole book of James. It's not that hard to read. Um, and then we'll we'll talk after mm-hmm. that um, because I just think it's such a great book. Um, you and I were talking about this earlier. <clears throat> this last, last Sunday, uh, we really were in Colossians chapter 2. Um, Paul writes this letter to the church in Colossae we were both talking about how much we just love this chapter in Colossians Mm -hmm. and, you know, we had different things we loved about it. So, you know, Colossians chapter two, what was kind of like a favorite part out of that chapter specifically? You have a bunch of highlights. So many, I started highlighting my favorite and then I was like, Oh, but then there's this one. (laughs) So yeah, pretty much just read the whole chapter. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You have to pick one off your, off your sheet. I don't know. I love, um, listen, verse 13, it says you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. But then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. And this way he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. So um, I tend to... point for me. hmm? That's what Daniel said. That's what he picked. (laughs) Um, so I don't, I, I can be my worst enemy and convict myself over and over and over. So that's probably answering number six, my old self, yeah. <laughs> um, just being distracted with all of that and forgetting that, no, it has been completely canceled, yep. nailed to the cross. Not only that, but he has disarmed the spiritual, um, rulers and authorities and man. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Preach it. Yeah. Nick. 
Do you have a favorite part? That's probably my favorite part as well. I, I think it's such an it's an iconic passage. You know, if I have more, <laughs> if anybody was in youth group, you know, when the time period that I was or before or after, you've probably read that passage and then done an activity where you nailed a piece of paper um, with your your sin or the thing that you continue to wrestle with to the cross. And so anytime I hear that passage, I see, you know, a cross with nails and sheets of paper on it in my head. Funny um, story about that, by the way. <laughs> and uh, I did an illustration that did not go as planned. <laughs> Of course it didn't. <laughs> so I did that illustration, but I used flash paper. It like okay. burns magic, up. Magic, yeah. paper. magic, magic paper. Mike. Mike. Na, na, na. Um, and then the way, like I had them bring them up and I nailed, you know, I nailed them there. So they all touched and then I lit them on fire and I was like, oh, we have a burning cross. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my no. God. Didn't think about that. Oh. But they disappeared. It was it like, it was cool. Until it Other than the looked <laughs> like a burning cross. <laughs> a burning cross. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> the cross wasn't on fire. The paper was. <laughs> it was a That's really awesome. quick. <laughs> Burned up the sin. That is an awesome analogy. Thank you. Just disappeared. In visual. <laughs> I don't think that's what the clan had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't th- As it's happening, I was like, you know, I'm the one lighting it. And it like goes up like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> Were you <laughs> starting to blow, trying to put... <laughs> that's where you're glad that you were a youth pastor during that technology kind of time because it wasn't being live streamed out whoa, whoa, somewhere whoa, whoa, whoa. wasn't being recorded <laughs> seriously it's an old person joke <laughs> um yeah for me that that was not my favorite part of it i do love that um and maybe you have this highlighted somewhere we'll on your highlighting and i don't even know what verse it is but it's where he's talking about like all of these things are a shadow of the reality Mm. and just that analogy that everybody would have understand still understands of like a shadow is just an outline of the real thing. It's just uh, an attempt to project an image of it, but you're, you know, nobody has a conversation with somebody else's shadow. You want to talk to the real person or mm-hmm. you want to experience life with them. So I just think uh, Paul is just really good at analogies anyways. I That's one gift I wish I was a little bit better at. Um, and I thought, I always just think that's one of his coolest mm-hmm. ones is just that idea. I don't know if you've seen the picture of a lit candle and there's a light shining on it. Mm-hmm. And so you see the the outline mm-hmm. of the candle and the wick, but the flame doesn't have, obviously doesn't have a shadow because mm-hmm. it is light. I just, I've always thought of that as such yeah. a beautiful representation of. You know, it'd be great if you did that, but like had it at the base of a cross. <laughs> 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 and it just ignited it. <laughs> Your faith is on fire. I always <laughs> thought of that as such a beautiful picture of, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many examples of, you know, being a light, like a city on a hill and, you know, not hiding your light light under a basket. Bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the devil can sit on attack, <laughs> but I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> We talked about types of distractions that distract us from our journey. Um, they were like the thinking of man, uh, our old self, and unnecessary rules. Is there a distraction that you find yourself c- kind of constantly or semi-constantly? That's your go-to distraction if one of these is definitely not tripping. rules. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're good can, there. Can you re-explain the thinking of man to me? Yeah, just. Uh, kind of like the way Paul describes it is just this high sounding philosophy, um, like getting lost in the educational pursuit and the like, oh, here's this new idea, this new way of, to think of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why I did those facial expressions <laughs> in that tone. <laughs> is that your interpretation of a smart hey, person? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was going really for dumb. a philosophical person. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so just that high-sounding philosophy. You look like the turtle from Finding Nemo. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. Surf some waves. Turtle. So just trying to sound really intelligent, you know, yeah. and sometimes you're creating new things that aren't actual things. Um, our old self probably doesn't need a ton of description. Yeah. And then just those unnecessary rules, these 
things that just become tradition or regulations that we begin to judge ourselves or judge other people based on as opposed to God. So any, any one of those that I know you had already kind of mentioned your old self. Yeah, I can get wrapped up into all of these, honestly. But um, the thinking of man, is that how it was worded? Yeah. Um, I definitely can go to that before I go to scripture or the Holy Spirit. Even when I'm trying to, most of the time, it's when I'm trying to understand what a scripture says. I'll be like, oh, I'm going to read what this commentary says, or I'm going to Google this scripture online. I guess you would Google online, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to use the Google machine. <laughs> Did some offline oh Googling. Gosh. Yes, yeah. I do it all the time. <laughs> That's called reading. Uh, um, My dad texts me questions, and a couple years ago, I was like, pretend you have a son named Google. Ask him. <laughs> he knows everything. He's way better and smarter than I am. Uh, yeah, but I'll look at, you know, your study notes. If you have a study Bible and you read all the things I do that first rather than Mm -hmm. just asking the Holy Spirit to explain this verse to me, um, which is ridiculous. I did that this morning. (laughs) I was, I don't, honestly, I don't even remember what I was thinking about, but I was kind of lost in thought. Um, and I found myself just like thinking through it and I, I caught myself (laughs) and essentially just prayed a prayer of like, you know, Holy Spirit, I need your what do you think about this? What should I think about Mm -hmm. this? How should I interact with this? So that's good. I tend to wrestle the most with thinking of man. Um, I think, you know, I started in student ministry pretty young and I, even though I'm not a three, like I, I have always wanted to prove myself and, you know, do a, do a good job. And, um, so I feel like I, I tend towards that of like, You know, hyper driven. Wa- yeah, driven, wanting to be seen as successful, whatever that means. Um, oh, I got a list of what it means <laughs> <laughs> for me. Anyway, there's a big difference between what you know we're looking from the outside in. What success is is success. You know, having more kids next year than you had this year. Does it? You know, is that success? And um, and so I, I definitely think that I, I wrestle with that even still, um, you know, Kami and I have switched roles and I think that, um, both of those roles are new. And so there's like, what do these roles even mean? And, um, you know, wanting that to be a good thing, but, um, but, um, yeah, I've had to kind of kill that part of myself that wants to be, um, I don't know viewed in a certain way. I don't even know how to describe it necessarily, but just like, yeah, I don't know. Daniel. Oh yeah. Thinking of man, we're a certain kind of group here. We like to sound intelligent. (laughs) Apparently I'm the only oddball here. (laughs) Oh, is yours different? No, I wrestle with old self too. (laughs) And I, I think in the context of Colossians, it was like, don't be sucked into the thinking of these other people, not necessarily right, like right, myself. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, don't yeah, be, see, don't be kind of wooed yeah. by, you know, people who sound smart, I guess, is probably more. And I'll get wooed by them because I'm probably smarter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. I, <laughs> you could add a fourth one in. Uh, I think scripture probably would make a case for the idea of like fear of man. Yeah. That, and that's that's kind of where I went with it. That that would, that's probably a struggle for me as well. Pleasing man rather than pleasing God. Yeah. Yeah. I think out of these three, um, you know, growing up in a, in a, in a church culture that had a lot of rules and unnecessary rules. Uh, I didn't hate it. Like when I was a younger kid, uh, by the time I hit probably 17, I was kind of like, oh, these are weird. You know, and I, like, I wasn't necessarily against it, but I really did begin to question them. Um, but, you know, as, as an achiever, it gave me something to achieve. Like, it gave me areas to be the best in and, you know, like, oh, we're supposed to dress up for church. I was seven and wore a double-breasted suit to church every week. <laughs> of course you did. It was olive green. I also had a frog tie that went with it. 
It's adorable. <laughs> well, I think it's really, it's a very black and white way of it was all of green. determining. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> determining whether you're a good Christian or not. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, it's oh, a way yeah. to keep score. And I sometimes hate not being able to keep score. <laughs> like I, I, I hate not knowing something. I or I hate like the ambiguity of like I'll just say it, and this is like boo shame on me. I hate that I have to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal something in me. I just want to know. Yeah. I, I just want to look at a piece of paper or I yeah. want to look at a list and go, yep, yep, nope, yep, 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 nope. Okay, I'll do that. I don't I don't necessarily want to have to sit in the ambiguity of like reveal to me what parts of me need to change or um I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're Holy but Spirit the second. At the same time, <laughs> is there a place for following rules? out of reverence to God. Like yeah. I want to wear, you know, you wanted to wear a suit maybe because you were going to church and nope. you, no, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. some people do. No, yeah. I think of um, even going to church in Africa, they dress to the nines yeah. because they're going to church. They're yeah. going to meet God. Like, why wouldn't you? It, yeah. Not because they're checking off something off their rule list, but out of love and respect. And, and I think even within that, it can be a really great thing, but it's all about the heart, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not against anybody wearing a suit. So if you no, want to wear I a just suit, wear a suit. chose that because that's what yeah. you used. But there was, you know, there was just a lot of, a lot of rules. Um, and I, I, and I've shared, you know, a story in during preaching, and I so I won't share the story. But there, there was a situation when I was 17 where like. I saw how rules became a hindrance to the gospel, mm -hmm. and as a, a seven, barrier. Yeah, as a 17 year old, I was like, oh man, that's really a huge bummer. Yeah. That, like, that that girl might not, like, she was really close to experiencing the people of God and experiencing God. And we basically told her she couldn't. Yeah. Like, that just really bothered me and set me kind of on a path of, like, okay, maybe I just need to reevaluate some things. And, Again, I'm I am thankful for the upbringing I had and I'm not like I don't ever want to have a tone of like criticism because I think intentions were good and all of those things and so I I hope that that's not what gets communicated um but and and like I said Sunday I will probably have our you know my kids will probably be like why do we do that? Why do we do that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping to show a little grace so I can have some shown to me when I'm older. Um, but, yeah, those unnecessary rules are things I get distracted by or could get distracted by as well as my old self. Yeah, and I You think guys know me. Like, thinking a man is probably the least distracted <laughs> for me because I don't even recognize it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't know. They're smart. I don't know. But you and I were talking about this earlier, going back to, like, the Colossians passage. Um Paul takes sin very seriously. Mm -hmm. In this passage, he's speaking to a specific group of people in a specific context about some specific things that they were building up as barriers mm -hmm. yeah. to their their faith. Mm -hmm. um, they are they are creating black and white sin issues over things that were man made, not you know. Um, and so I, I think going back to what you said, like there are rules that are important. Like the original design of the rules that God gave us was mm -hmm. to keep us in right relationship with him and right relationship with each other. Um, to be faithful in my marriage uh, is an important rule because it keeps me in right relationship with my spouse. Yeah. I don't want to violate that rule mm -hmm. because I don't want to violate that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what we were. That's right. You know, I just put that up because we were talking about. Um, it's not a free pass to sin, right? Yeah, and I think that's a really good point, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, because people, people will take it there. Mm -hmm. You know, it yeah. just becomes a, and you know, Paul. In other places, Paul says, "Don't go on sinning," so you can say, "Oh, look how much grace abounds in me." Like right. to prove that's just ignorant. Um, so, yeah, he's not saying that. The other thing I was thinking about is, you know, Paul wrote this, and 
Paul could probably easily claim all three of these. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. these were probably struggles for him. These were distractions. I mean, he was a very educated person mm -hmm. in more than one culture. Um, he had an old self that was maybe the worst of old selves you could have. Mm -hmm. um, and he l lived pre-encounter with the living God. Everything in his life was a rule to follow. Right. Um, and so, like, I don't think these are just, eh, these are good ideas. Mm -hmm. I think these were probably struggles for him, too. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. That's true. Any other closing thoughts on the series or maybe we covered everything and we don't have any closing thoughts. That's okay too. I, I guess m my biggest encouragement is if you find yourself in that place of like, yeah, I'm, I'm headed in a direction, but I don't know where I'm going or you're that passenger that's sitting, looking out the window, like you can take ownership over this. Or maybe if you're in the driver's seat, get in the passenger seat and stare out the window and trust that your father's going to get you where you need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the ride. Both work. <laughs> Both great analogies. Ultimately, traveling is amazing. The adventure is amazing. But what's more amazing is when you travel light with only the necessity. You get to your destination. <laughs> and when you're naked. <laughs> you sound like Will Forte. Uh, <laughs> you did. I should have never shared that. Y'all are taking something so great in making it hey don't please don't want me in with them <laughs> all i did was encourage somehow your encouragement still feels creepy <laughs> all i did was encourage you don't be jealous <laughs> don't be jealous uh, so i still um every time we talk about the the right baggage which obviously makes sense like whenever you're traveling mm -hmm. you need to have the right things mm -hmm. packed i still like every time you talk about baggage in the christian culture yeah. it's bad it's, negative. it's always negative yeah. yeah and so trying to like luggage yeah I need some luggage not yeah. baggage no. yeah, not baggage. we want you well, to have luggage. deodorant and undies and deodorant <laughs> would have been great <laughs> yeah. today see my gosh I, I but never your friend came through you did I really appreciate it because you had the I wasn't right luggage. Say I was the friend. I was <laughs> just going to let it go under the unnoticed. I'm just unsung heroes. Glad I knew what <laughs> Real you, American you heroes. <laughs> also, you have like 30 bottles of different medicines in your, in your vodka. Well, I do not. What are you they? Do. You do. I have, have like Excedrin, Excedrin migraine because I live in an office with you. What else do I have? <laughs> okay, mom and dad. Name another one. Ibuprofen. I don't think I have ibuprofen in there. Fun I fact. I I just just look making your, things up. I will go, go back and we will look and we will update there. our friends <laughs> as to what medicine. Fun fact, I have. Mike was going to pharmacy school or I something was. like that. I was. Before. I was going to be a street pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? A street pharmacist? A drug dealer? Oh. A drug dealer. <laughs> Uh, I, I think we have an unofficial sponsor we of do. this episode. Daniel, um, you want to bless us of, with that? In light of this current series and uh, you making fun of me on stage, this thing, I don't even know how to open it anymore. Because um, mm. you made fun of me for having maps. And I told you that I have a box of maps. You and did tell me that. Look at this one. This one's Illinois. This is uh, Region 7. That's a big one. Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky. So specifically, this this sponsor is National Geographic. These feel good. These this one nice. has they are Mexico awesome. on it. I got all of the United States of America. Nice. Wow. Oh, you took wow. out the big one. So is it maps? Is that the unofficial sponsor for today? Is it just maps? <laughs> yeah. National Geographic. No, it's National Geographic. But I'd uh, also like to give a shout out to Rand McNally. Um, yeah, Rand McNally is like... The map company for the common folk. This yeah. smells like, like this old is bougie people. maps here. These are great. These are, are great, not? great have, material. Have these been in your home? Foldable. Look at this. Yeah, great colors. Because it smells like old people. Because well, Daniel like, is an old person. Like, real hard. They were my grandparents. You do not know how to fold a map. No, no, no. I'm trying to show you something. Oh. Uh, look, <laughs> this side has facts about the states in Region 7. So you have like I just see pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the words. Okay, this is oh, legit that okay. awesome, though. You have yeah. flight and this. This is <laughs> flight and race cars. Race, Indianapolis and Abraham Lincoln. racing. There's Are you cool condoning stuff. betting? Our sixteenth so, president. Listen, what you need to know is a day might come where your precious GPS 
doesn't work. Well, that map's like 50 years old. So, so I will say, I can I will get luck anywhere getting. in these four states that I need to go. <laughs> I will say this. When you told me you had a box of maps, I imagine like a jankety old cardboard box with some jankety old maps. This is cool. Thank you. It's cool. This is for the That's whole cool. U.S., huh? I have never yeah. seen a box like that. This is. It does smell like an old library. Mm-hmm. It, it was my By the way, grandparents. if you're older and listen to this, you, you don't have you. to smell this way. <laughs> And so if you've chosen oh not gosh. to, congratulations and good on you. I would also like to know, if you are older watching this, the three of us love you. Yeah, no kidding. Cherish you. Three? One, two, three. Okay. Nick's being mean. Oh, yeah. I was like, who doesn't? He's cutting me out. Um, hey. No, this was not all part of my inheritance people. from oh. my grandparents. I, I, mean, I got this. They are These are cool maps. No, I got I a them. seashell. Yeah, these are cool maps. That's awesome. These would have been way cooler for my illustration if you would have actually found them for Sunday. Only yeah, I thought they were in a box in the basement, and it turns out they weren't. They were very in your bedside table accessible. <laughs> <laughs> they were just in a hall closet, right there on the shelf. You in might the front. want to spritz some Febreze in there. <laughs> You'll ruin the. Integrity Will you quit smelling them? <laughs> yeah, what is, I've only smelled it once. And what it is was, that book in the back? It's. A guide to the rest of this cartography so book. If you need to find no Big words, orienteering. So if you need to find a city, mm. so give That's me a city index. to find. Give me a city, Des Moines, Austin, Texas, Des Moines, Iowa. Austin's okay. I'll go city. with Des Moines. How do you spell Des Moines? D E S Des Moines. Oh, thank you. Des Moines. Nope, I went too far. Okay. You could also D- buy a D- New Hope S- mug. S- That's true. We yeah. have, D- New we, we have an official De- sponsor. Yeah, we yeah. have an <laughs> official sponsor. Des Moines. Des Moines. Dude, Iowa. this ship is sailed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you go to map, Austin would have been map much easier. four, section P12. We already missed our exit. <laughs> we're, we're heading to Nebraska now. What do you think man is thinking of you now? Don't care. What oh what man is thinking? I feel like I'm gonna break these. Man, cell phones so are while good. you're waiting, hit subscribe. Yes. <laughs> hit subscribe, leave us a comment. <laughs> how P weird this is. Twelve. Right around here, this area. If anyone's just listening to this and Maybe. not watching, share this episode with your I friends. I remember learning this there in it school. Is. It Des Moines, was so fun. The big, one of the big. Did you say Des Moines? <laughs> no, Des Moines is one of the biggest. But you used uh, the book. And I did use the book, and I found it. Good job. You see that? I did see that. We all saw it for about seven minutes. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Yeah, subscribe to this on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening on. We do have mugs for sale. That is an official sponsor. If you want one of those, figure it out. You know how to buy stuff. We don't need to tell you do that. Do they? So, yeah, <laughs> you know how to buy stuff. Use a card, cash, whatever, on a Sunday morning. Nick, I'll put a link on here. I don't think we will. I don't won't. think we have a link. We don't sell them online. <laughs> <laughs> We're not a digital storefront. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today for this mess of a show. <laughs> put a link on there. If you're old and can figure out how to buy this, good for you. <laughs> put a link on there. Because he, he says, <laughs> I don't think they do. Oh. <laughs>